Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. You're listening to KSO Today. It is February 25th, 2020. 2020, as they also call it. I am Derek Young with your Tuesday edition this week, uh, catching you up on all things Kansas State, kind of marketing a little bit ourselves and what the site has to offer this week and, and beyond, really. And also, you know, touching on some Kansas State topics that are worth discussing even in this platform and medium. Uh, I think the first thing to talk about, obviously, would be basketball. The, the Wildcats do resume action tonight, Tuesday night. At Baylor against Waco, or at in Waco against Baylor, I should say. Uh, Baylor coming off their first conference loss of the season, the first game since losing to the Kansas Jayhawks at home. So they're they're obviously going to be pretty hungry, being back uh, back home and looking for a W to get back on track and hopefully chase a Big 12 championship, much like the Wildcats did a year ago. Kansas State did win in Waco last year. However, um, not nearly as successful season this year as it was a year ago. Kansas State coming off a loss against Texas at home where they were really never in contention all that much against even a Texas squad that had been, you know, less than average this year as well. And obviously they were shorthanded too in that game. So not an impressive performance to say the least from the Wildcats. So they'll try to respond and at least, you know, save face and hopefully keep it a contentious ball game against the Bears in Waco on Tuesday night. Uh, moving on, getting away from basketball for a little bit. It's, it's almost time for spring football. It's a good time of year to start talking about the football program, which, you know, is on a positive trajectory after going 8-4 and four in Chris Kleiman's first season. Uh, that first season, the coaching staff is the same coaching staff that is – still in place right now. Um, typically, every program is going to see at least one departure from their coaching staff, whether it be voluntary or involuntary, retirement, a better opportunity elsewhere, or just needing to create you know, space to add fresh faces. But year one to year two, it'll be the same coaching staff. The, the entire staff stayed attacked, didn't go anywhere. Um, it never really was com- never really was close to losing anyone or or having to even necessarily cons- <coughs> excuse me to consider you know other uh options whether it be position coach coordinator whatever uh th- th- they all were kind of locked in and that doesn't mean they didn't have opportunities so we'll touch on one they certainly did i think a few of them had other op- opportunities to go elsewhere within the power five one specifically was scotty hazelton kansas state's defensive coordinator that has Kind of claimed probably a significant amount of notoriety in the past year. He is a fan favorite in Manhattan and definitely, by some metrics, had an improved defense. And I think it was more or less, if we're being honest, just the fresh philosophy and mantra that they played with, the style. It wasn't necessarily um, as passive of a defensive style that, you know, K State fans that have been accustomed to seeing, whether it be under. Tom Hayes or, or other other player or other coaches. So I think the st- the the style more or less was probably what was more refreshing to fans than anything. And of course, that makes Scotty Hazelton kind of a fan favorite in that way. Some metrics they were definitely a better defense, and others they were probably pretty similar to what we've seen the last five to ten years in Manhattan. Um, with that being said, getting back on track, Scotty Hazelton did have what we have learned, a Pac-12 defensive coordinator offer. Um, Obviously, he's been in the Pac-12 before at stops at USC. He's been out west before with other stops being at Nevada and Wyoming. Of course, he worked under Chris Kleiman at North Dakota State, and that's where um, the two connected. Um, Specifically, just to clarify, it was a defensive coordinator offer in the Pac-12 that Hazleton rejected to stay at Kansas State. Um, I don't think he really contemplated it all that seriously, but it was on the table. It wasn't specified what school that was, but if you you know, do enough research, you, you understand that there was only about two schools looking for a defensive coordinator in the Pac-12. One had a new head coach. That was Washington State because Mike Leach left for Mississippi State. Um, 
the Cougars hired Nick Rolovich as their head coach. Rolovich and Hazleton are um, acquaintances, are pretty close colleagues. They worked together at Nevada as assistants in 2013, and I think that's where the relationship really took off. So I think Rolovich did his first call for defense coordinator, I think, was to Scotty Hazleton. But the K-State defense coordinator is elected to stay in Manhattan. And what we have learned, anyway, or get the impression of also, is that it would probably take a very lucrative offer to deter Hazleton from staying at Kansas State. He really likes it in Manhattan. He really likes it at Kansas State. He really likes that coach Chris Kleiman, and he likes working for him. Um, in fact, when Hazleton was hired, obviously he replaced Ted Monachino, who was the first team coordinator at Kleiman at Kansas State without coaching a game. I think he was probably only under on salary for three to four weeks. Um, he came over. He was a position coach for the Indianapolis Colts prior to you know being signed to work under Chris Kleiman in Manhattan um, when Monachino was hired. He actually was also the second choice, the first choice being Scotty Hazleton. Um, uh, the, there was a lot of negotiating, obviously, that takes place when when you go into a, a role and um, the financials just weren't working out um, between agents and athletic department, basically, is kind of how it's been relayed to us. Um, then Monikina left. Hazleton was aware of that, obviously. And basically, I think... The way it was described to me, kind of just, you know, pushed his agent to the side and talked to K-State himself. It's like, let's just get this done. This is where I want to be. So he really wanted to work for Scotty Hay or for Chris Kleiman. You know, he went out of his way even to, you know, remove agent and, you know, that kind of rabble jabble of the negotiation process to make it happen. So it's going to take a lot for him to leave. And this opportunity certainly wasn't that. Um, maybe maybe the NFL comes calling, who knows, at some point, and, and that sways him. But at this point, the way we understand it is uh, he has no intention of leaving Kansas State or Manhattan as he, he loves the town, loves the school, loves his players, and loves Coach Climate. Uh, we'll move on to our, I guess, last phase of today's KSO today, February 25th to 2020. Uh, let's talk a little bit football recruiting, touch, or, and we can talk a little bit touch on basketball recruiting. Obviously, I hope everyone enjoyed the coverage and content that we were able to produce. Mostly, that would be Matt Hall and Grant Flanders able to produce from the St. Louis trip in which we went and saw basketball pledges, commits, oh, now signees actually, Davion Bradford and Luke Kasubke. I'm sure you uh, heard Matt's kind of take on those two and what he, he gathered from them. And, and obviously the many pieces of written content that Grant Flanders produced from it as well. Uh, kind of my, my, uh, my take on it is Davion Bradford he probably was what we thought he'd be. There was no surprises necessarily there. He is probably seven foot or close to it. There's not much hyperbole in that uh, size description, and he's carrying probably close to 240, 250, I would think. Uh, and maybe he needs to lean up a little bit to play, you know, effectively at the Power 5 level and to, I guess you want to say, uh, maximize any athleticism there because he isn't the most athletic guy, and that's mostly because he's not a very lean guy. Um, definitely not a center or a five that I've seen Bruce Weber deploy since working at KSO, so a different style of play. Um, but much more forceful and powerful around the rim than what we've seen from K-State the past few years. So I think offensively around the rim, while not the most skilled, he's fairly skilled, and I think he's really aggressive in, in the force and power that he uses, not necessarily uh, as finesse and soft uh, around the rim as, say, a McCall Moeen or a Levi Stockard, so someone with a little bit more aggression and power. So that'll be refreshing. Probably not going to be as good of a defender, um, as especially as McCall Moeen, just because of the athleticism differential between the two, but perhaps a better shot blocker just because he's grasping that area of his game a little bit longer, taller than you know, McCall Moeen and uh, more natural at it. Uh, and he wasn't even blocking shots. He was a pretty poor shot blocker just a year ago. He, he'd tell you that. He told us that. He's, he said it on camera. So... Just seeing him kind of grow in that way in just a year is probably um, 
shows a little bit of optimism if he can be that. Now, as far as a pick and roll defender, you're not going to see him do what Mac does. Um, so they're going to have to devise other areas how to attack the pick and roll when Davion Bradford's in the game. Um, obviously, probably not going to hedge as hard and stuff of that nature, but um, he's going to be an at the rim player, whether it be offense or defense. He probably is not going to stray too far from it, but he's going to be a better finisher than what we've seen. With Luka Supke, I think there was more surprise to it. Uh, I, I said it on the site, uh, and I think Matt Hall agreed. He was a lot more thicker in the lower body than I was anticipating because I'm expecting to see a wing or guard probably tall, long, and lean. That's what you see a lot from basketball players, but he's got a little bit of a powerful base himself, and I think that's what provides him the lift and explosion that you don't necessarily expect if stereotyping you know he's the white small forward white white guard you think he's just going to be a spot up shooter with a little athleticism and little lift and a little explosion and that's that's not necessarily him I'm not saying he's all the way Christian Brown um, who signed with KU that K-State also changed he's another guy that kind of uh, outdoes those stereotypes too he's far more athletic and far more explosive than you would certainly give someone of his nature um Kasupi is that too. Probably a little bit of a poor man's Christian Brown. Uh, not as consistent of a shooter, um, but a pretty good shooter. Um, not as great of an athlete, but a pretty good athlete uh, laterally. Now, when I say athlete, I mean in terms of explosion, lift on his jump shot, lift. He, I mean, he's going to go up and attack the rim, dunk, dunk the ball, and he can probably hit his elbow on the rim. He, he's got a lot of lift and explosion and leaping ability in that way. But as an athlete, he is... A little bit slower. Um, he's not the speed that Christian Brown is. That's probably going to limit his effectiveness as a defender. Um, but he'll be a pretty good offensive rebounder because of some of the traits we've already discussed. Not necessarily an elite defensive rebounder, but he's probably someone who's going to make teams pay on the offensive class. And he's starting to become a better, sh- even a better shooter. Uh, he's been a good shooter his entire career. In high school, started out a little slow this year, a senior season because of illness, because of injury, it's starting to come around for him, and he's even shooting better now than he was before those things occurred. So a lot of optimism when it comes to Lucas Supke, at least from you know a scoring standpoint, and being a more explosive athlete than people want to give him credit for. Um, more recruiting stuff, more trips actually coming up. We're going to go back to Denver area, maybe even a little bit of Boulder. We'll see Braden Wood. Uh, I do with a lineman that K-State certainly likes that has you know ties to the school. And is, and is a, a primary target on the defensive line, uh, three-star in the Boulder area. And hopefully while we're, in, we're there, we'll, we'll be able to talk and, and, and chat a little bit more recruiting with, with other targets as well in the area. We're hoping to maybe you know go see Ty Robinson or even Gunnar Helm, Arden Walker, guys like that. We're, we're, we're trying to create more opportunities to see them as well when we're out there. But at the very least, we will see Braden Wood, so that'll be something fun and more to invest in the site for because we're going to continue to give you a bunch of reasons why we're the number one at providing recruiting content and coverage first and foremost. Everyone, We're always going to provide game coverage. Everyone does that, but we're also going to provide recruiting coverage at an elite level, and no one does that except for us. Uh, another trip, not necessarily a trip for me, trip for the crew in Manhattan when they come to Kansas City for the Big 12 tournament. Keep your eyes open and your ears peeled uh, because we'll probably be doing some video content as well with with the pledges that are from Kansas City. Of course, that's Devontae Pritchard of Gardner Edgerton High School and Darian Stevens from Blue Valley High School. We we hope to talk and get to know them a little bit more as well. And that'll be really cool for fans to see, whether it be on YouTube where everyone can see. And if you just watch us on YouTube, there's a lot better stuff on the site too. And we'll have stuff there. Uh, the last thing to get into is uh, we're almost at 15 minutes long, but I just had a lot to cover and a lot to say today, I guess. But uh, just want to... Talk about maybe upcoming visitors, not give away all the content because I want it to stay a pretty good premium uh, premium item for for everyone on our site. Sorry for the noise there. Uh, but they're going to have plenty of other visitors, and it will be Connor Tolleson. He's a pretty good offensive tackle out of, out of Jackson, Missouri. He'll be in Manhattan in March. Um, for, for, the, for the concrete information, for the good stuff, check on the site, of course, as I said, as always. But, yeah, we'll have Connor Tolleson on campus. Uh, there's really good stuff on wide receiver Keegan Johnson out of the Omaha area right now. He's a big-time target. Uh, all the information you want to know about him is on the site. Uh, a lot of visit information, not just K-State, but other schools. They're also 
two more wide receivers will be will be on campus in the month of March uh, as well. Braden Wood already touched on him. We we hope to con we chat with him in Denver or in Boulder. We certainly will. He's going to be visiting in March, and some other visitors and, and things to look forward to are, are obviously all the commits. They'll so certainly be on campus soon. There's a four-star prospect from the Midwest that'll be on campus soon. That'll be something to watch for, and a few tight ends that they're they're certainly uh, targeting as well. They'll be on campus so in the month of March and the month of April. If you love recruiting content, if you love following Kansas State recruiting, and you're not a member, and you're considering being a member. Now is probably the time because the, the worm's going to start to really turn in March and April when the dead period's over and the juniors really start visiting places, especially Kansas State, who will have three junior days, but they'll also be having kids in and out of every spring football practice, um, too, and we'll certainly have coverage provided for that and probably inside information as we uh, you know reach out to all of our contacts. I'll keep everything else behind the premium wall for now, but a lot of good information there. We'll wrap it up today. It is KSO Today, February 25th, 2020. You've been listening to KSO Today on K-State Online. Thank you and tell your friends.